back to Burning River Bushcraft. I got a squirrel a couple days ago, and I'm going to be making a real quick squirrel stew in the woods. All right, so now that I got the squirrel quartered, I'm going to take it over to the Dutch oven that's warming up on the fire right now. I'm going to go ahead and brown uh, all the squirrel meat. All right, so I got a little bit of lard in the Dutch oven, and I've got the fire built away a little bit. Uh, pretty much I'm on coals right now. Uh, now that the lard is all hot, I'm going to go ahead and brown the squirrel. So here's the beauty of cooking in the woods. Down the log where I quartered the squirrel up, uh, there's blood and uh, all kinds of nasty stuff. Rather than worry about cleaning up, I'm just sliding down the log to fresh snow and I'm gonna go ahead and slice up one onion. All right, so the squirrel's brown. I'm gonna pull it out and lay it in the lid of the Dutch oven. Then I'm going to cook the onions till they're soft. So I'm going to uh, continually turn the Dutch oven, like a quarter turn, and I'll jockey it in and out of the coals uh, closer to the fire, away from the fire till I get the temperature I'm after, and just get these onions brown. Right now they're thickening up in the in the fat and the juice from the squirrel meat, so it's all turned into a, a nice thick uh, base that's going to help this stew out. All right, so the onions are all set. I'm going to go ahead and add the squirrel back to the onions. I'm going to add them fatty part down. So the most meat is going to be down in the bed of onions, touching the cast iron if possible. Now to the squirrel and the onions, I'm going to add one can of Rotel tomatoes. And then I've got a can of Great Northern Beans. If you're carrying cast iron, you know, canned food is not that big a deal. I'm going to go ahead and pour it with the liquid in it. Make sure everything's mixed in there. So now that I got it covered, I'm going to go ahead and cover the top of the Dutch oven with some coals and just monitor it. I'll go ahead and spin the lid one way, spin the Dutch oven itself the opposite way, you know, every 15 minutes, half hour or so. I'll monitor the fire and I'll let this cook until the squirrel meat starts to get tender and fall off the bone. So right now everything's doing fine. The fire's burned down to a great bed of coals. Unfortunately, I worked last night, so I got a late start out here. I didn't get uh, the fire going until about 3.30. By the time I got everything on the fire, it was maybe quarter to four. Uh, and I'm just running out of daylight and I'm running out of batteries. So I'm going to keep this cooking. I'm going to cook it until the meat's literally falling off the bone. Right now, uh, the squirrel looks like it's cooked all the way through. Uh, it's just not quite the consistency I want yet. So I'm going to stay out here, keep it going. And uh, I think I'm going to heat this up and have it for lunch tomorrow morning. I'll show you how it turned out.
So I cooked the squirrel stew yesterday until past dark. Uh, and actually, I overcooked it. It got dry on me. I had to add like a, maybe a, a metal, half a metal cup full of water to it. Stirred it up, brought it back to life, and I think it did a lot for it. It gave it a little more brothy type texture. Uh, took it off the fire, let it cool down, and then brought it out today, and I was going to have it for lunch. So I heated it up. It's completely cooked through right now, and I'll show you how it looks. It looks really good, actually. So the meat's just falling right off the bone. Some of the, here's a leg. Yeah, the meat's just barely hanging on. It is like smoking hot right now. Uh, this was an older squirrel. I know you squirrel hunters know that an old squirrel can get tough real quick. And this seems like a pretty good way to prepare one. Especially out in the woods. I know I've cooked older squirrel over the fire before. And boy does that thing get tough. It's like squirrel jerky. Get a piece of the back. That's good. Here is, eh, this is probably like the squirrel tenderloins, I would suppose. It's the back section. And I can just take the corner of my spoon and it just flakes right off. The, the Rotel gives it the flavor. If this was just squirrel and beans, you know, there's really not much to it. I don't carry a lot of spices when I'm in the woods. Truthfully, I'm not much of a cook like this. I know a lot of cast iron chefs, and I'm not one of them. I don't pretend to be one. Now, as far as equipment goes, this was a, I think this is a two quart uh, Dutch oven. I think it's got a eight inch maybe, I think that's right. So this would be plenty for two people, plenty size. Anything bigger than that, I'd have to go with a 10 inch or a 12 inch. Mm. This is uh, Gotta watch for bones because the things just cooked down, especially the backbone where it's uh, really got no structure to it anymore. I'm not gonna say this is the best squirrel I've ever had. Uh, my grandma makes squirrel gravy and I'm not even gonna attempt to make that. Um, I've got some of her recipes, some of the stuff I can do, and some of the stuff's just beyond me. So the squirrel gravy I have not mastered yet. Uh, someday, maybe. But this is a great way to Great way to have squirrel. This beats the hell out of just roasting on a stick over the fire. Kind of neat. The squirrel was killed maybe 25 yards from here. So this is a this is a local local food source, I suppose, right? But it's awesome weather out here. It's like 22. Off work today. Uh, got sitting by the fire, eating squirrel. Uh, this is uh, about as good as it's going to get. So the Dutch oven something I've been attempting to master for a while now, and I just really haven't put the time into it, to be honest. So this is something I can definitely see just having a fire, experimenting with some different recipes, and uh, I'll probably show you a video here or there when I get things figured out. Till next time, this has been Jamie Boggs with Burning River Bushcraft. See you soon.